I wake up every single day excited. I wake up every single day just like wanting to tackle the world. I get to see all my best friends um, who are now my business partners. Uh, the house that I live in is my office and a creative studio. So I just walk downstairs and I've set up my living room to have my own podcast space. I have uh, tables where all my guys can work. Uh, I have a bar in my garage that I've changed to and a boiler room area so with decks. If anyone wants to throw a party, um, which we did throw a party for Rockstar Energy Drink two weeks ago uh, at my house. And I just think the, the cool things happen once you have that confidence to take that leap. All right. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have a rare uh, moment where I'm actually recording two podcasts in the same week. Um, we had Kian Brennan on in the previous episode. And today we have Donnie. What's up? Donnie. Ooh. Tell the audience about yourself. So my name is Quinn. Um, I came to Australia on a floating door. No, not really. But <laughs> I was born in Indonesia and I am very into music. That is, I think, the foundation of who I am as a person. When people ask who I am, the older you get, you're just kind of like, who are you? I'm like, hey, who am I? And I think that I figured who I am. And that's a musician or someone who's a creative Anything to do with creativity, I think that's who I am. I make music under uh, an alias called Don Darko, which is drum and bass music. And I've been producing for close to 10 years now. This is my third music project. And basically what I want to do in life and within the brand is to do exactly like what you're doing, man, is to empower creators and empower people that are wanting to do music. And helping them start and helping them go through the hurdles that I went through when I, when I first started to. So what is the, uh, let's start at the beginning. You mm -hmm. got into the industry. Yes. How did that go about? So I started, oh, it was years ago, to be honest. Um, I very, I was very inspired by Flume, very inspired by Skrillex. I did not know how to make music. I was still in my early twenties and uh, my friend who was in high school with me a year younger, uh, we were seeing each other at the gym and he was also getting into electronic music and we were dabbling into Ableton and I essentially just nerded it out on YouTube, just teaching myself Ableton, watching all the interviews, what's so not interviews, flume interviews. And then eventually I just started making it. I spent the time that I would use to play my Xbox and PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And instead I would just go and learn Ableton. And I think the biggest part was that I, I was obsessed and enjoyed the process a lot. Um, once both of us kept going back and forth with it, uh, we, we were like, hey, we kind of need a name. And he was like, I have a restaurant in Malaysia called Oriental Cravings. I was like, yeah, let's go with that. Oriental cravings. Didn't think about the repercussions that was going to come face me <laughs> years later. And, and then so we did that uh, successfully. We had a, like a really good run uh, of support like by like, Alice in Wonderland was the first one, Aral Grime, Diplo, Jaws, all these people that have, um, Dylan Francis, most people in the EDM scene uh, in the trap music era. Uh, we were basically making music and bootlegs and songs that were of that niche and of that genre. And I think it kind of bit me like, like a virus. And I was like, this is the, the high that I want to constantly chase, you know? <laughs> Just playing in front of a crowd was, was great enough, but to play in front of a crowd that loved and played your music yeah. is, a, is a feeling like no other. So how do you go about creating these tracks? So you started in your early 20s. Yes. Did you have a did you have an inkling that that's what you were going to do when you were a teenager? Um, so I actually play guitar and I love to sing. And uh, my mum used to always force me to go <laughs> and play and sing at church, and and so I did right. But I didn't know anything to do with the technicalities of music production. I didn't even know what a music producer was. And for those like I think a lot of people out there are still struggling to find what a music producer is, you know, because you have Taylor Swift, who's the performer and the artist, but she doesn't make her music. It's 
other, like they have she has her own team of music producers that make her music for for her um and not a lot of people know that so it doesn't necessarily mean that if taylor swift is doing something incredible that it's all her the credit goes to her because she is the the face of the company that is taylor swift yeah she pays she yes. hires the people to help yeah. her um but initially, yes. initially, before you have the team, before you have the extra yep. talent to support, how do you get to that point? So, because everything in when it comes to music making is done on the computer this, these days, right? So, obviously, me being myself and poor as hell and, you know, just have a part-time job. Cracked version of Ableton. I'm not going to lie. Everyone's <laughs> done that, right? I'm guilty of it. So, is all of you guys. You pay it for it now? Yeah, of course. Everything I pay for it now, nice. yeah. But um, I like I can't not pay for it now because I don't trust the cracked ones anymore. Yeah, I can't I can't afford it to 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 like shut down on me. But uh, I did that and YouTube uh, a lot of things, and then it, it it became a little bit more refined searching. So instead of saying how do I make a song with Ableton, it's like okay, like to make a song, I need to structure it. What are the structures of a song? Right? Oh, in the song, wow, there's a build-up, there's a, there's a drop, there's an intro. How do you make an intro? And then how do you make a drop? Hey, you know what? I actually make drops way quicker and the creativity comes to me at a higher rate than when I do make intros. So now I'm going to focus just on the drops. How to make your drops sound better, but not just drops. I want to make trap music. How to make a really good drop in trap music. It requires a lot of leads. How to make a good lead. Things like that, and just every step and you're just refining my searches um, when I was younger because most people just wouldn't I don't think they, they'll be like I've tried learning on YouTube but but I can't do it it's because I don't think that they've refined their search to to have it exactly like what they need mm. to have to get to the next level and I just kept doing that for years um, to the point where I was obsessed with it I kind of still am um, I had a partner and even the, like she knew every single day, I'd be in Ableton, I'd come back from work, I'd go into Ableton, spend some time with her back on Ableton. It just became such a thing. And, and I think you, I just had to have that drive to learn all the technicalities and I guess the hard yards of the job in itself early on, because now I'm 30 years old, this is being my third music project. I find, I find it like a little walk in the park in terms of how I have to, what I have to do next, because the music and the creativity side just comes naturally because I've had those years of practice. Yeah, you got the foundational yes, correct. skills and practice, and yeah. you know, you've, you've got you've done the volume. Yes. So now it's just what exactly. do you want to do? Oh, yeah. You've invested your time, you've upgraded your skills, and mm. now you can make it at optimized scale. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So optimize it, and so now, for me, seeing at this day and age at where the market is going with anything creative it's always it needs to be fast and it needs to have quantity as well as quality absolutely and so if you can nail all three the consistency of quality quantity it's you, you're just going to be successful in any way shape or form 100 percent, 100 percent. and you when you when you get when you have that beginning Yes. part when you start to realize that's your that's your mm -hmm. thing you you mentioned that you were you know tentative to the missus yes. obviously you were you were still working yeah at, at a different job what did you do so i was actually a bartender yeah and then i was a bar supervisor then i was a glassy been a head glassy did security everything in in the space of hospitality um, to be honest, like I don't know a lot of people know that I wanted to join the police force, and so I was actually already gonna gonna be in the police force. Um, I had uh, Victoria Police because I was gonna either move to Melbourne and then WA Police. So I was in the uh, what is it? The stages of of entering, um, and and that was like another side of me that I wanted to to become because I'm being an older brother and someone that I think is quite responsible that's what my parents would say anyway yeah. they were like that would be a good job for you and i was like i think it would be a good job for me either and and uh, i had to I had a conflict between if that's the life that i'd want or the creative side was the other the one that i'd want then what made you decide on the creative i think it was just uh i found myself always 
being more of myself when I'm creative, right? And when I'm in, in entertainment, right? Just in everyday scenario, just me as a person, um, even a big thing was to ask the people around me because you may think you know yourself, which you, you do, but there are things that you would do that you won't pick up, but other people will, especially people that's closest to you. So sometimes it's good to have, you know, you let down your ego to be like, hey, what do you guys think I'm like as a person? Like, and just grill me, you know? Quincy, you're shit with money. You have poor time management skills. <laughs> but hey, you're funny and you're, you're good at this music thing that perfect, you do. Perfect, perfect uh, uh, elements like, for a DJ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect elements for, <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> and I think I... I I, had, I remember still to this day where I was like, I told my best mates and I'm like, hey, I think that's what I want to do in life. It was literally, I just called him up. I'm like, I'm going to do this forever and I'm not going to stop like this music production oh, thing. Love that. So pivoting to that from a bartending, glassy, easy, well, not easy, yes. but like a safe career in police, in the police mm -hmm. force because you're working for the government. Yeah. Um, the money side. And being yes. bad at money, yes. how are you surviving? Um, well, because I had a part-time job, obviously doing uh, bartending um, and, and doing all these things like on, on the side, uh, that was obviously the way like to survive. Um, because at that point in time, um, I wasn't, I guess, confident in myself to really just drop everything and do it full time. Um, even, even now, after all, this year, all, all these years, like I'm only just barely now doing it full time and it's not even been a year yet it's been just under a year but in my 30 years that i've been alive it's only just now i've had the confidence and the ability to understand what i need to do to ensure that i can do this full time you didn't rush it i don't think i i don't think i rushed no it. i don't think yeah. you did either and yeah. you had the patience to really yeah. knuckle down on this is the thing yeah. that you want to do this is great this is exactly what i talk about to yeah. everyone like whatever skill that you have, whatever interests that you have, figure out what sort of job yes. that can align with, whether it's your personality, your literal hobby, mm -hmm. or whatever else just distracts you from the everyday yeah. life. 100%. Like what keeps you up at night that makes you want to go, I want to do that? Yeah. What are you thinking about at work yeah. in a job that you're not really passionate about, but you're just there to take a paycheck? Honestly, yeah. It's not the way to live. I worked know? at Blackwood's uh, warehouse, which is like we, you know, sorting out the tools picking out the tools and putting them in boxes for these mining companies. Mm. Um, and they're like, they're really big mining companies, right? Because Blackwood is a big, huge company. And I was there just in the warehouse working and picking all these things. And it would, the contrast of it was during Monday to, to Friday, I'd be working full time doing that. And then Friday night, I'd be like, see you guys, I'm off on tour. I'm playing in Brisbane and playing in Sydney. And, and then I'd play in these shows where I'm treated like a rock star. People want to take photos with me. I get free alcohol, get free treatment. People treat me differently. And then on Monday, back to being yelled at by my boss again. And I think that contrast there really, really, I'm kind of grateful for it because I think it humbled me and made me see my life and the careers and the job aspect of being a, a musician as as like mate it's just another job yeah and you know you're not you're not top shit mate <laughs> sit the fuck down so one year in <laughs> barely uh how how are you seeing this challenge that leap in hindsight is it worth it to um to well 100 percent worth it i've i wake up every single day excited i wake up every single day just like wanting to tackle the world i get to see all my best friends um, who are now my business partners. Uh, the house that I live in is my office and a creative studio. So I just walk downstairs and I've set up my living room to have my own podcast space. I have uh, tables where all my guys can work. Uh, I have a bar in my garage that I've changed to and a boiler room area. So with decks, if anyone wants to throw a party, um, which we did throw a party for Rockstar Energy Drink <laughs> two weeks ago uh, at my house. And I just think the the cool things happen once you have that confidence to take that leap. But that leap there, the uncertainty is, is what scares people and what drives people crazy. Because there is literally that one big leap where like, look, 
any of these things could happen, but also any of these things, bad things could happen. Of course. And you have to understand the only way to take that leap and make it onto the other side effectively is the trust and belief you have in yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, you just would not be able to do that. Yeah, you also need the drive to tackle the Correct. problems that are inevitable anyway. Yeah. To overcome them to then succeed. People don't want to have those problems come at them. Exactly. They'd rather a job they don't like exactly. than the tackle the problems that exactly. will make them stronger and better in their the thing yep. that they love. That's it, man. Oh, what if people don't come to my gig? That's it. Great. Learn how to promote better. Yeah. Oh, what if Honestly. people don't listen to my songs? Yeah. Don't just post them on spot uh, on SoundCloud. Post them on Spotify yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about your your process now and getting people to see your shit. So, like, obviously now has completely changed how it was four or five years ago. Mm. So I've, uh, and I'm very aware. I'm, I would consider myself as a as a big nerd on social media and marketing stuff. Uh, Brandon actually calls me a doom doom scroller, and but he, what he doesn't understand when I show him every time, so like every time because I know and I'm aware of that, right? I'm with my phone. That's my job. I'm with my phone ninety percent of my my time. I'm sure you understand. So in in order to make it more uh, like efficient, instead of being like doing the whole thing, oh, I gotta lock myself out. No, let's just make it so that every time I consume my phone, I'm learning something new, and I feel like for myself that I'm the smartest I've ever been, the more, more the most driven I've ever been, yeah. and I think the most knowledgeable I've ever been to this date, just because of um, how I've changed, I guess, little habits in terms of consumption of uh, content yeah. and, and the way I, I tackle my process in doing music, right? I have an idea. What's that? I have an idea. This is an idea I've been sprouting for a while, but this could this is the first time I can actually do it. Yeah. So based off what you just said with your uh, your learning off of yes. your doom scrolling. Yes. You can tell a whole bunch of shit about a person by looking at their uh, explore feed on Instagram. Oh yes, yes. Are you game enough to give me a phone to show the people what your explore feed looks like? Yeah, actually, hundred percent. I wonder what it is, but go for it. All right. Get me on the Instagram, and I'm yeah. just gonna show the world what it is you're consuming the algorithm's not gonna lie yes all right so we've got <laughs> the most random all right stuff. so straight up just so you can see that there you go hopefully it's not reflecting so we've got um uh theo von yeah uh premiere pro how to's we've got some motivational shit a lot of stuff about how to make good content um more business inspiration uh, shout out to Vukman. Oh my goodness! Um, <laughs> and he's like that one too. So, that do you have a my, missus? Oh, what was it? Do you have a missus? Uh, <laughs> no, that. But that's a funny story because that's my ex missus. She lived next door to me. <laughs> there was uh, Beck. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, explore. This is no no hiding here. But yeah, there's your feed very similar to my feed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get you're into the the, the puppies. You like boxing. Yes. You like girls. So <laughs> you know that's fine. It's, it's all good. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, but you your feed is you know you. No, I'm not going to say you're typical guy, yeah. <laughs> but there is a lot of like all right, funny stuff. Yeah. Girls, boxing. Yeah. Um, motivational I love, I love my, shit. Yeah, I love my sports. And learning. And I love my dogs. That is the only the only co piece of content that I can enjoy that is probably not like educational is probably that. I dogs. love that. I love that. So, <laughs> all right, that's going to be a new section on my uh, <laughs> podcast from now on. You know those ones where a uh, guy comes up to a couple and like, how much do you trust your yes. partner? Like, yes. Unlock your phones and let them go through your text. Oh, and then yes. The girl's that's like, sick. oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Like, um, I would like to discover stuff about you. Yeah. Give me, have, let me have a look at your explore page. Yeah. You know, and like if, if roles reverse and you ask for my explore page, yes. you're just going to see a lot of uh, females yeah. on there. But I have a, a hack for it because legitimate, this is 100% mm -hmm. true. I get inspo of what I'm going to buy my wife next in terms of clothing oh, and, true. Nice, and, the, nice. and the, of the exotic type. Yes, so yes. it's research. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Also, <laughs> with, with um, uh, the reason why I have f females and stuff on there is because... <laughs> I, you already Do you know it? Well, I, I, one of my businesses is we, we do uh, manage creators. 
Yes. And, um, yes, creators. That's, that's all you have creators. to say. Creators. And so sometimes I take yep. the inspiration of uh, what pieces of content does really well yep. uh, in terms of like specific shots, specific angles, lighting, and hooks <laughs> that may be used for certain occasions. Very good. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Very good. So uh, social media, you're using it for research. Yes, and that is a lot time. of the time that I do my yep. doom scrolling in. Um, but it's a habit that I still need to master mm -hmm. because you just get down a rabbit hole. Yes. I've hacked my algorithms enough so that I get uh, interesting stuff. On TikTok, yep. you can actually um, tell it what you want. You type yep. it in and the AI thing is like, what would you like to see more of? And I'm mm -hmm. like, educational shit to do with marketing and AI and uh, editing. Did you know you can do that again also on Instagram now? There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised because they're yeah. competing against each other. Yes. But the other thing is if you ever catch yourself doom scrolling, Put yourself, if you think you're going to do it, yeah. get it like a timer on your watch or your phone, go 20 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. So when the 20 minutes comes up, it'll tell you, hey, are you are you actually doing what you need to do or yes. are you looking at shit that you don't need to? Um, and then people go, Sev, how do you come up with content ideas? Yeah. Plugging my app, obviously, use that. But I guarantee <laughs> you that when you're scrolling through your For You page or whatever page, yeah. five videos that you see that come up that aren't ads – you can repurpose one of them in For the sure. same style towards your niche. Hundred percent. And if you don't believe me, book me, in <laughs> and I will show you how to do it. Book Seb. He yeah. knows what he's doing. No right? my shit. But like I've done this exercise so many times with yes. clients. I'm like, all right, I'm going to use my explore page to get you whatever the fuck that you do, mm -hmm. and show you how you can repurpose it into one of these yeah. ideas. Bang. And people ask me all the time, how did you do it, Seb? How did you get your followers and stuff? Literally that. Yeah. Just repurpose, repurpose shit that stuff, works. 100%. And then they go, oh, but I, I feel like I'm stealing ideas. I'm like, you're a musician. Yeah, How yeah, many samples do you use? Literally, you all the, most of it is like all samples. Yeah, yeah. it's all samples. It's, like, it's either, even if you're creating something like using Serum or these VSTs, they're all something that someone else has already made for. Mm. I, I, in, when you come to do music, I have no ego about it in, in sense like, look, there are going to be people that are do things better than me that are going to process their drums better than me they're going to make these sound designs mm. why do i want to go and compete with them and spend years perfecting something that they've already perfected i'm going to take the stuff that they've they're teaching and then utilize that in my own production and do a collab yeah, yeah. collab or even just just use it in my own stuff because most people have this ego where they're like no i want to have Everything that I produce has to be my own thing, my own samples I record, it can't be someone else's snare. There are people that are like that, that are very stubborn, and then they don't end up growing because the process of them getting from zero to a finished product, they they have all these excuses. Yeah, it's a lot longer. Yeah, it takes a lot longer. Just make that process streamlined as easy. The end the main thing is the end product. Mm. The end product is the thing that's everyone's going to love and you get the data instantly will they like instantly. it will they not like it exactly and then you ask them why don't you like about it oh yes. the snare's shit i'm yes. like oh maybe i shouldn't record it myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know that's 100 percent. so okay so you got the production right you, yep. you're inspired you're, you're making your stuff now distribution yes how often does a dj or a producer yeah how often should they realistically put out music in 2024 so it's the the main thing for anyone who wanting to start is always the quantity not just the not the quality right especially when you're starting quality subjective yeah 100% that's why because uh, at the end of the day most people are you're going to get better the more you do it mm. so i always tell people like you should be releasing bootlegs if you already know how to make music release every 2 weeks what's a bootleg a bootleg is like for example, you make a song, like Taylor Swift make a song and I decide to take her song and then turn it into my own little remix. Mm. I can't call it a remix because it's not an official. Yeah. I didn't get her permission from the team. Yeah. So it's called bootleg because it's kind of like you're bootlegging alcohol back in the day. <laughs> That's yeah, what it's yeah. called, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, people call it bootleg. Some people call it like different names. I call mine band remixes just because of the controversy around the word band and then having it as a remix, which gives more people... You're like, ah, oh, why is this banned? And it makes them look at it like, is this the reason why this is banned? But it's just another word for bootleg. Gets more clicks oh, yeah. um, in, in a way where instead of it like in a thumbnail, I can do it on my song. Yeah. So every two weeks, yes. one bootleg. One minimum. bootleg. Yep. Where are we putting it out on? SoundCloud. Um, always put on SoundCloud Correct. because you can, you can have it on like anywhere yeah um, i think you should put it on uh, youtube shorts you should put it on your instagram reels what i actually like to do if it's a 
I go a step further, and if it's a, I don't, if I'm not sure if this is a bootleg that someone would like, I will make the intro, the intro, not the intro, sorry, the build up and the drop of the song, make a video on it on my Instagram. If it blows up and gets a couple hundred thousand views, then I know people like it. I'll finish it drop and then the I'll release it. When's the track release? Yes, hundred percent. What about putting it out on something like Spotify or iTunes Music? Spotify, you can't put bootlegs on there. Okay. It has to, it has to be like proper properly done and you can do that through DistroKid. The reason why Spotify is a really hard one to grow, mm. it's because you as a, as a consumer can't really have any power in dictating how the views are going to go. Mm. Uh, you can only spread the word about it. And Get onto playlists and shit. Yes, like playlisting. So tell, me about, tell me about the properla, a properly. What do you mean by properly? Proper release is like if I'm doing my own original mm -hmm. music. So uh, I really... My recent song I released was called Armadale Traino, which was where I asked the public, like, what should I make a song about? And someone said Armadale. I'm like, okay, challenge accepted. Um, I redid the, the vocals and, you know, this train runs from Perth to Armadale, blah, blah, blah. Got a bunch of samples and stuff in there, made a drop because uh, I'm a part of Shock One's label, Dark Machine Records, DMR. And uh, we're managed by the same manager. I gave it to him. I'm like, I want to release this uh, as my first release for this year. And he's like, yep, yeah, let's do it. So what he does is he then processes the songs and talks to the Spotify offices and goes to the DSPs, which is digital streaming platforms, and, and then um, puts it through the label and then has it uploaded and scheduled and ready and pitches it to, to like Apple Music, pitches it to Spotify, and so he does all this and I just have to provide him with the assets and and then all I have to do because I like to be in with the marketing, I then uh, work out a marketing plan uh, of what to do leading up to it and then also after you drop then you got to realize, okay, you're going to play a show on it to keep it going further, um, where you're going to get some write-ups and some people, credible people getting their hands on the songs to play it out so you can put on your socials. Yeah, it's a whole release like a mm -hmm. movie. Yep, yeah, that's nice. it, literally like that. And then so once it drops, then then you see, you know, if the Spotify officers like it, then they'll put it in their playlist, which I was so surprised because this is probably my most, I guess, meme song. And it got in four big editorials. Nice. New Music Friday, New Dance Beats, um, what is it, uh, DN, this DNB, big DNB playlist. And then um, so I was super shocked. And so were a lot of my followers, I think, uh, it just made me realize how open uh, the offices are now to to creativity. Yeah. You know, you don't have to make some crazy cool things about love sounding it like freaking Taylor Swift or One yeah. Direction. You can write a song about Armadale train line being held dodgy yeah? and <laughs> then they'll like it. <laughs> so we'll get on to the marketing side in a yeah. sec. But for the viewers, um, they're starting out, let's say they've got the skills, they've yes. got they've got what it takes, they've got the foundations. Yeah. They've started putting some stuff out what is realistically next for them? So they're dropping yep. a bootleg every two weeks. Do they, th let's say they do it for six months. Yes. Two weeks, so every two, two weeks yep. without fail. Yep. What's what's the next play six months? Yeah. So before they even get in, into that, let's just say like, so the bootleg part is, is, is one part of it, right? Mm. So I get this conversation all the time with up and comers because they're always asking, look, I can do this but what do I need to do? But then they drop off the consistency because they got to start treating uh, their music project instead of just being like a music project, right? They can drop the bootlegs after two, uh, every two weeks, but if they're not doing anything on the socials, which is just as crucial and important as the music itself these days, then they're not going to get anywhere. you got to start seeing it. I always tell them this, okay? So imagine your whole project is a wheel and it's a, it's a wheel that stays still. And to get this wheel moving, you got to put these tokens and there's $1 tokens, there's $2 tokens. And the big $2 tokens obviously makes the wheel go a little bit faster, the $1, slightly slower, but it still moves, right? And what you got to do is you got to have a bucket full of these chips. And then, so these $1, $2 tokens could mean, $2 token means a bootleg, $1 token means a really big uh, a show maybe, another $1 token could, uh, could mean three stories in a day, another one token could mean your three posts every single week, right? So you gotta gather all these tokens up before you even start your project. That's what I did with Don Darko, was I gave myself five month lead time to make all these tokens. Assets, and yeah. then as soon as I was ready, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start putting these tokens up, right? And you'll see, the wheel starts spinning slowly, right? But as soon as you put one token up, right, which is a song, and you do nothing for a, for a month, what happens to the wheel? It stops. Yeah. And you're back to square one. 
and there's people that have done this for three years they're like i've been doing music for three years not getting anywhere because you you you, you keep putting when you have momentum you the, by the time you put the first coin in and the second coin you've already stopped and it's kind of started again so you got to do it really really quickly at the start put two dollars put one dollar put two dollars yes yeah. and the cool thing about these coins is right because you got these special coins that you have is sometimes these coins can turn into a hundred dollar coin because when it goes viral if it goes viral if it gets into the hands of someone credible it can launch that that wheel can start spinning a little bit faster mm. so you got more chances of making that happen by having more coins and a big basket of of coins <laughs> why do you think people look at outliers that have put in the first couple bucks into yeah. this and then gone boom and then spun, spun yeah so it can happen right but then it'll quickly you'll quickly find out if it's all luck or if it's actually skill by again time right someone could blow up after their first thing but then you see how they follow up if they follow up and it, it takes them like another six months and and then the next one it takes them about a year like they're not gonna, they're gonna be irrelevant one hit wonders yeah one yeah. hit wonders exactly yeah. What's an example that you know that has done that one hit wonder in the DJ drum and bass scene? Oh, that's a pretty big, that's a, that's a hard one because it's a very active scene, you see. So mm. no, not a lot of people can fall through the cracks of just being a one hit wonder and then, and then go on away afterwards. They'll either wonder where this guy has gone uh, or they'll just say that it's a one hit wonder. And usually those kind of tracks are just meme tracks. So everyone already knows it's like a, oh yeah, that's just like, it's gonna do well and that's it. Uh, and then it's gonna lose its value over time. Because music is something that is is more, I guess, close to someone's heart, like when your creativity, mm. it's like you're, you're not making a funny video, you know, you're putting a piece of art there. Yeah. No matter what type of art, there's contemporary art, there's graffiti art, it can be, either can be at your taste, but it'll be respected in the prospective communities. Now the, this is the big one for creatives. Yeah. You're putting these dollar coins, two dollar coins in, mm -hmm. but essentially overall, yeah. you're just making art. Yes. For yourself. Yep. What if it takes years before someone goes, oh, this is sick, but you've been thinking this whole time, this is awesome. Yeah. For you. How do you navigate that? Well, again, this is, I, I had people also that um, spoke about that, that are like, stubborn enough to daily like the way the kind of music that they make and you know it's good to me why does it have to be for other people then that, that's fine but at the end of the day the consumers are the ones going to be listening to your music they're the ones going to come to your shows they're the ones that you're going to they're going to have to be your super fans you can be your own super fan that's great and all but if you want the masses if you want the benefits of playing sold out shows you have to cater to the market you have to cater not just to the market but find a happy medium mm. too much of the market you're selling out yes right? too less then you're a gatekeeper and you're not going to do well or something like that you have to find the happy medium mm. and that's that's something i'm big on that's as it, well yeah. um being a creator and doing the stuff for myself yes and then going ah, i'm not really into this anymore yeah do something else yeah and then it goes viral and then everyone's like, make a series on this. And you're like, yeah, sick. Yeah. This is fun. 30 episodes later, you're like, I'm all over this. Mm -hmm. But everyone wants to keep going. Yep. Keep going, keep going. Um, what's my goal? Yeah. My goal is to get as much attention as possible so yes. then I can spread my message of That's it. do what you love yeah. and nothing else. So how do I do that? I need to cater to the market. Yeah. Ha find that happy medium and be able to then go, hey, by the way, checking in on you. Yes. Are you doing what you love? That's it. Are you listening to yourself? Yeah. Did a whole TEDx talk about mm -hmm. this. It's That's great. so sick, yeah. It's great. And um, yeah. So I'm six months in. I'm doing mm -hmm. my, my one or two dollar uh, yep. wheel spinning. It's yep. spinning. Mm -hmm. What am I looking for during that spinning? So what's actually f funny enough is like as the more the, the wheel spins, it's inevitable that you will garner attention from people, right? Because like that, that's the whole point how Don Daco was, it was started was me to prove that point to people. Like I love drum and bass, but I definitely didn't come from a drum and bass background. And I made that like clear to people that I see in the, in the, in the scene, you know, I don't ever want to cut people's grass or think, tell them that I know that I'm the shit. I'm always very respectful. And the people that have been there before me, I, I will respect and always learn from. And, but that, that's the truth and the reality of it is like, 
once you do it for six months, there are going to be things that are out of your control that is good things that will, that will happen to you if you do it you do it correctly, right? And if you have these certain behaviors and, and understanding, so if you're putting these dollar coin in, but, the, but it's not, you're not getting any reach, let's just say, you're not getting any views, then you can't justify that that dollar coin you're putting in is spinning the wheel, right? So you gotta also understand that with each coin, if it's making it spin, that means uh, hypothetically, we're speaking about an artist or a creator that they've learned from their mistakes. Or this one's actually not doing as well as this one. I'm going to change my strategies and, and making this one spin. Um, I can almost guarantee that after the six months, if they haven't like progressed in, in terms of follower base on SoundCloud, Spotify or Instagram or got some of their songs played by someone big, then clearly they're doing something wrong with that framework because every single person... I don't know anyone that's not talented and have done the consistent work on both social media and in music that haven't gone anywhere yeah. in their career. Yeah. In music, that is. So let's get in on to the marketing side of it. Yeah. Um, I picked you up recently from the stuff where you're ringing in to the <laughs> gym. Yeah. <laughs> Cute clip. Yes. And uh, yeah, that clip was hilarious because I'm like, great. You're doing something funny, relatable, yeah. interesting, but you're dropping your track in it, yeah. which is sick. Um, how did that come about? Uh, so I have all these brilliant ideas that I always write down. It's just because I have a big team uh, that I work with. I want to make sure that when we execute it, that it does in, in, the, in the best possible way, right? Um, and even now, like before, even doing, uh, doing it more consistently, I'm still trying to figure out what type of hooks do well, what kind of things make the, the people retain, retain information and, um, and get the attention, right? Uh, and so it's, it's a big process of like when I have an idea, we actually found it out by accident, right? And then funny enough, the first one that we, we ever did, um, we were like, hey, hypothetically, if we use the roadcaster and do this and plug it into here, and then having it to here, plug it into here, here, it should, we should be able to play our songs through it, right? And they're like, yeah, I think so. So we tested it amongst ourselves. And we're like, holy shit, it works. And uh, we, called, we, we called one person up um, at Anytime Fitness and we did that and got an insane reaction. But then afterwards, I went full business mode. I'm like, hey, look, I know I've seen you guys on social media and you guys probably don't look like you're converting well. And uh, if do you guys have a, a content team or someone that wants to do the marketing? Because see the kind of stuff that we've just done here, we can do that for you. Nice. And we got we got the lead. Uh, he gave us the number and everything. He's like, yeah, 100%, let's have a chat. So I got a, I got a lead from one of that. And, um, and that was just like a big random moment. I was like, oh crap, this yeah. is so funny. <laughs> and then we're like, let's, let's utilize that um, in our content yep. because it's something that's completely different than what anyone else is doing. Um, I go by this framework of content creation that works every single time where it's a, called a primary and secondary. So primary is always something that is you don't want to sell and you don't want to talk about because nowadays you're dealing with 17, 18, 19 year olds who have had social media and phones their whole life. They're so immune to ads, they'll just cross away every single time, every single chance they get. So essentially why UGC is on the come up now and personal branding is because they want people to trust. So if you're gonna say, let's just say, if I wanna sell you this sunglasses, I'll have a better chance of me talking to you about something else completely unrelated, right? Maybe about, uh, what's, let's see what's going on right now, like Taylor Swift or Trump or Biden with his sunny sun on and blah, 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 talking in it, right? Without having, um, without me necessarily telling you that, I, oh, buy this. If I'm like, Sev, you should buy this. This is pretty sick, man. I think this is really, really cool. It sounds like every other ad. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to have 10 or 20 people that's come up selling glasses exactly the same way. But if I, if I wear these in a, in a stupid, stupid way like this and start talking to you, <laughs> you're going to notice them a little bit more, yeah. right? And your subconscious can't help but, you know, notice the glasses are off my face. But then you're also going to be like, those glasses colors are actually pretty cool. Just very, very briefly. And, and then in, there's going to be a time where I'm going to come back in and out with these glasses the same way where you're going to make 
Quinn, you need to adjust your glasses and you're going to take the product out of my hand yourself without me telling you. And then all I have to do now is flip the script and be like, hey, give my glasses back. The only special people can have them and it's going to want you even, you're going to want them even more. Love that. And then you're just going to be like, hey, can I just have a look at these glasses? Oh, you can. I'm only going to let you have a look at these glasses once, but only special people are allowed to touch them. So you must be pretty special. And then you're going to now want to give me money for, for this. And that's literally the, the basis of that structure with content is the same way. So I don't ever tell people like, hey, buy this, come to my show. And I'll be like, hey, I'm putting a boxing ring in a nightclub. If you want to come through and see what that's like, then you can come through. But that's actually my headline show. I'll never ever talk about myself. I'll talk about what the community wants and what people like. Love that. You know? So Love that. yeah, that's like my framework for it. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, but this show would not be possible without the help of Bright Tank Brewery. They are the major sponsor of the Sevo Show. Huge shout outs to them. Check them out. Great beers, great people, great everything. And uh, well, let's get back to the episode. So we're here with Donnie. We've spoken about marketing, We've spoken about indirect marketing yep. to the audience to not sell the product, but relate to the audience. Yes. That's all you do. Yep. That's it. That's it. And I love that you say that because it's what I've been trying to teach yeah. people all this time. I had this guy, his name's Stefan, love the guy. And he was working for a client of mine. Mm -hmm. And they came in, they, they, they hired me to come in to, to advise them on how yeah. to dominate TikTok. And it's a big company. Yeah. Big company. They, they have a lot of venues that you've probably DJed at before. Oh, yeah, yeah. And okay, uh, I know who it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I taught this guy. Mm -hmm. And I taught, the, I taught him, like, he crushed it. He yeah. just took it on and he... He came up with his own ideas and executed them, found, finding trends, relatability, yeah. just crushed it. Then he, uh, he was putting too many hats on at the company. Right. He wasn't just a creator. He was doing comms and invoices and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, you can't be an all-rounder and a creator. Mm -hmm. You need to just create. Yeah. And that's where companies are going wrong. Yes. If you want a, to crush it on social media, you need to have a genuine creator mm -hmm. and let them do their thing. Yeah. Don't have this cop corporate propaganda shit either don't yeah. make them create it the way that you need them to create yes. it because it's not going to work yeah like i had a gym mm -hmm. franchise oh, and i'm not going to tell who it was mm -hmm. but they're, they're they're going pretty big at the moment well yeah yeah uh across across the east coast you probably yeah. already know who they are yeah rhymes with sevo yeah, I was going to say, I was like, yeah. Probably said too much. Anyway. Devo, hey. Yeah, Devo. <laughs> anyway, um, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help them. Yep. They were keen, but they were telling me to change too many things. They wanted it this way and this yep. way and this way. My performance is based off of what I think will work. Yeah. Not what my client thinks will work. Because mm -hmm. if you're looking for validation... I'm your, not your guy. Yes, yes. If you want some genuine advice and something coming out within that understands the yeah. audience, who's been doing it for almost 10 years, mm -hmm. you know? Literally. My problem with marketing teams, internal marketing teams these oh, days, man. is internal marketing teams have people in them that don't actually care. 100. They don't give a shit. Yes, 100. So what do they do? They delegate it to yeah. marketing agencies yeah. who also... Don't give, Don't a, give shit. a shit. They hire juniors. They hire their own account mm -hmm. managers. I see this ad coming up all the time. Look, hiring a new account manager. <laughs> yeah. How many accounts do you need to hold? <laughs> How many account managers do you need? <laughs> like, I hate account management. Yeah. I barely like it for my own <laughs> shit. Yet someone else, unless I really believe yeah. in the message. I'm doing collaboration with Denon at the moment. Yeah. Right? Denon, and oh, I, get, yeah. I get full creative reign. Like Den and DJ. The, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Nice. They're such a cool brand. Yeah. Like 1910. That's how old they are. Really? Japanese audio brand. Wow. And I'm like, this is I sick. thought they were new compared yeah. to Pioneers. Well, exactly, because they didn't have a good yeah. marketing team, right? Mm. So I'm working with some of their talent. Yes. And, they're, and they're, they've got some good people working yeah. with them. Wow. But they don't have that creative spark that is TikTok, yeah. hence why I'm mm -hmm. there. And every time I've give I've been given at least a twelve month runway, yep. I've crushed it. Hundred. Unfortunately, companies in in the past of my history have said we want to move this to this way now. We want to do this now. We want to do this now. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why would you do that? And every single one of them that's done that with me 
who's like dropped me and moved on have lost followers. <laughs> All of them, yeah. every single one. Have dropped off. They've dropped off or they've, they've completely plateaued. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm the difference. 100%. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the LeBron James. Literally, you know? yeah. And he's, could, he's the goat, by the way. He is the goat. And I, like, it's weird because, you know, you, you come into this marketing shit. And you're yep. like, ah, uh, and you're doing it for someone else. You're like, mm -hmm. you have this imposter syndrome yep. shit. But I'm like, I'm first. Yes. I'm a disruptor. There's no such thing as imposter syndrome here. I am, That's it. I am coming in. <laughs> unannounced going hey yeah and then when i go back to these uh in internal marketing teams i come in to teach them yeah and all i see in their eyes is i have to do this work now yeah because they're not like and then i look at the ceos yeah. going what the fuck <laughs> what are you doing you know like and fair enough like when they get hired they their scope of work doesn't doesn't say make tiktoks and yes, reels for sure yeah but I'm like, you're marketing, bro. What's yeah. your overall That's role? Literally it, yeah. Getting more attention to yeah. the brand. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man. But you and know what's crazy and what's awesome? Um, a lot of people are actually kind of stressed out about it. But I think in the next four or five years, you're going to see a, a huge drop off of marketing agencies. Correct. Sooner. And, and they're, they're, they're all just going to be people wanting personal brands mm. and people like yourself and myself who, who nurture our own audiences mm. and they're gonna would rather pay us to communicate to, to our audience rather than paid ads yeah paid oh. because once <coughs> meta is now rolling out uh zero ads uh for a subscription model now for instagram and facebook so now people can uh they eventually want to bring out a model where you can pay monthly subscription and they won't put you ads. Yeah, so like that Spotify, means- Spotify, like a YouTube, yes, like- Yes, like yeah. that, exactly. And now they're all, um, what's gonna happen with that is now the cost per conversion, you know, the cost per click, the cost per acquisition is going to be so high mm. for all these businesses. They have to pivot. They're gonna have to pivot. They have to pivot. And, and they're gonna look early. to people like yourself and myself. So I'm like, yes. Because now, because then we, they're yeah. gonna have to ask us to to do shit because we've taken the time and taken the years, bro, of nurturing our yeah. audience yeah. for years. I think this is the new wave of kind of your next superstars. Yes, where hundred percent, but where the best ones will be the most authentic. Yeah, and the ones with the most integrity, and the one that's consistent. Bro. Yeah, and the one the ones that have the most to lose and provide the most value. Yeah, exactly. But the but brands that they they want to onboard those yes. people in, they have to align. Always. You can't yeah. get just some hot chick going. Mm -hmm. So today I did my hair with the with the this um, with the hair dryer thing. Yeah. It's like who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> like why? Oh. It's it's old mate. She's yeah. she's that chick that's like really mm -hmm. does those funny things, you know. Like uh, there's a chick I forget her name. She does the f uh, logos, the really bad logos. Oh, true. The blonde true. chick in America. Yeah. She's got she's so good. She's like this sarcastic. She's like McDonald's logo needs to be uh, updated, and she just creates this shitty paint <laughs> job on Microsoft Paint, yeah. and it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. was her thing. That's yeah. what she was known for. And then it's getting a bit hot in here, so the cameras are a bit buggery. Uh, mm. It's the nature of the game. Uh, I don't even remember what we're talking about. <laughs> um, um, I think we're talking about personal branding. Oh, personal branding. And okay. like teaching, I guess, like people. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll go for it. So personal branding, working with a company yes. needs to be alignment in there. Like, mm -hmm. I don't like Jetstar. <laughs> I won't be doing any collaborations <laughs> with Jetstar. I saw a creator the other day. <laughs> shout out to Stubber. Love the guy. Uh, he did a. He's in Vietnam, and yeah. I'm like, oh, that's sick. And then it said hashtag branded sponsor oh. or branded partner or something. It's their yeah, way yeah, to get yeah. around the hashtag ad, the hashtag sponsored yeah. shit. And he he, know, he mentioned Jetstar. I'm like, man, Jetstar shit. Yeah, why? Why the fuck would you like? I yeah. did a four minute twenty two rant about why Jetstar sucked <laughs> through my experience, yeah. and it had two point five million views. <laughs> so Jetstar's never going to use me for their shit. Yeah. I never slagged on their staff. Mm -hmm. I just said this sucks. Yeah. And um, but my goal is Emirates. Oh hell Emirates, yeah. Emirates, Singapore Airlines, oh, for sure. Malaysia. Mm. Um, yeah, those even, big ones. Yeah, those big ones. Qatar. Oof, you know, um, get in the Dubai market. Oh, mate. Sold. 
Hundred percent. Right, right. And but they've got the best of the best already. Yeah. So yeah, you're like, for sure. You got to come in as as the brand yeah. mascot, right? Yeah, yeah, literally. So I don't. Sports not my thing. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was, but I'm not interested enough in it. True. Um, so, but for me, it's like education. Yes. But it's also hard to sell education because oh, man, kids sure. are procrastinating online. And you're selling it to a younger audience. So, mm. yeah, they're yeah. Just, their mind's all over the place. But, dude, everywhere I go, it's like they want to take a photo mm. and stuff. And it breaks yeah. my heart knowing that it's mostly because I'm popular. Yeah. That's it. It's mm-hmm. not the fact that what the content's about. It's just yeah. the fact that everybody knows who I am. Like, oh, yeah. You know? I know what you mean, yeah. I'm trying to navigate that at the moment. But at the same time, it's like... I leverage it as well. Yeah. And whilst I'm still figuring mm-hmm. out the code of how do I break through and have the people that watch me go, holy shit, like mm-hmm. this video is actually good for me. Yeah. Like this is educational shit. This is good. Like yeah. this is going to change my life. You know? 100%. Um, but I guess it's the time and age, <coughs> time and place and age of the person that's yes, watching correct. it. So it's just quantity. Yeah. Putting those tokens in. I do want to do more skits. Yeah. But they're going to have to be a little bit more education geared. Yeah, yeah, I know what so you mean. So yeah. the funny shit. Or that you can I just do the do. you know jab jab re- left hook where it's just like all of it are educational, and then you can have that left hook that does completely different. That's it. Um, and then it's and the it's book like just over there. Yeah, like a like a completely different thing. But most people always say, "Oh, I have to stick to one necessarily thing." Like that sucks. I don't like to be put in a box. Like you don't have to be. Yeah. Just be true to who you are, and then whatever you do. Just provide value in that. That's it. And like incite emotions. Because like virality is literally just inciting emotions and on a mass level, right? And so every single time my guys come up and they're like, oh, Quinn, what do you reckon of this post? The first thing I ask is like, what's the objective of that post? Mm. What do you want me to, to, to know about that? Your hook is about yourself and your mate. So if I didn't know who you were, I would not be interested automatically so you're now niching it to only people that you know and people that your friends know Mm. so broaden the niche a little bit right instead of talking about yourself talk about the activity and stuff that is you're you're doing um and then so once like i drill my young guys about that they become really good at it and we did started a a events business like last year um and then we we were grew really really quickly uh in just six months and i think our third video went viral straight away and then every single time we we had zero ad spends and had about four to five shows in a row sold out and from organic content organic content and it's because of the same primary and secondary thing that i was saying because i had to prove the concept first right i had to get <clears throat> in the event space it's hard to get people to come to your event because you have to sell tickets and so the only thing that these promoter companies uh, have to sell tickets is the axe itself. Flume, 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 flume. You gotta, you gotta come see flume. But they don't have any relation to the consumer to to their own business. So what I've decided to do is like, let's not have a headliner. Hell, we're not even gonna introduce w- who's playing or where we're gonna play. It's just gonna be at this date, and and we're gonna make videos that's gonna spark curiosity and FOMO. So I'm gonna make it. There's only gonna be 150 tickets. It's gonna be at this date. And if, if it's gone, you can't come through and we're going to tell you the day of. And every single time it tapped into the, everyone's like psychological FOMO. Oh my God. Like, I, I don't know where it is. It's like the, the name looks cool though. Like side quest, like let's do it. And then we deliver on that promise, right? First event sold out in, in one day and it was on top of Billy Lee's Chinese restaurant on the upstairs area. We threw a rave there, <laughs> right? Cause there's no money to, to, to do it because people weren't in there for, for the acts. They were there for the community, right? And so we we're now able to have a, a business model where we can now sell out shows at a, and then now we just slowly increase the numbers and we don't need headliners. So that's like the, the perfect model ever. So now if you decided you wanted to be a DJ one day and I was like, yeah, let's do, you just do a headline show at SideQuest it would sell out because no one need to know who you are because they're just they're following the community and the yeah, experience the brand, we give them the brand you've built and just the, and providing That's value it. and no one else has done that like when we when we go through these events it's like we provide an open deck hour so you if you decided that you yeah. want to DJ you can go in there and play 
And guess what? It's recorded because yeah. we provide cameras to record. So much value. And then we give you the content afterwards so you can now post about it, which then gives me more value because they're posting about my event and then they're posting about themselves. Win, that's win, it. win, right? Mate, someone that's watching right now, rewind about three, four minutes and rewatch that again. That was valuable as shit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, man. That's good. That's gold. Yeah. Um, and it's like re regurgitating the shit that i'm saying as well yes. and but in the music space me, yeah. yeah but reminding yeah. me i'm like fuck yeah this is we're we're doing yeah, things yeah, this is yeah. right and like you can apply that to any space as any well space, 100%. Um, and music musicians hit mm -hmm. me up all the time say how do i promote my song yeah i'm like why the fuck should i listen to your song <laughs> exactly. what's good about your song what's good about <laughs> exactly you? like right? i like if you're a shit singer mm-hmm and you can't really tune your guitar properly. Yeah. But you make the funniest fucking, 100%, you know. 100%, bro. Whatever. Exactly. I'm watching your content. You're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm, the coffin, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a live act uh, with my song. I'm dropping yeah. my song at this bar at this time. I'm like, fuck, yes. I want to go. I want to meet you. 100%, I don't give a bro. shit if I, you know. But that, at the same time, what's their primary goal is yeah. two people to get to love their music. Mm -hmm. That's where it kind of becomes yeah. a little bit like wedding photography, for example. Mm -hmm. I uh, I feel so guilty charging what I charge. <laughs> but the demand is so high yeah. that I have to. 100. And people hire me for, for me. For sure. And yeah. I'm like, do you like my photos though? They're like, yeah, we love yeah. your photos, but we want you But they also like you, yes. And I'm just like... Because <laughs> yeah. that was my goal originally before, as, I, as I became yeah. a, a creative, yeah. a professional creative uh, in the wedding space. I loved weddings. Yeah. But the TikTok blew up so much yeah. more. I'd go down the aisle before the couple does, before the bride does. And everyone's like, oh, it's Seth. And <laughs> I'm just like, guy? did I just kill this <laughs> yeah, girl's yeah, moment? Yeah. Like, they're all going to just be buzzing that I walked yeah. down the aisle with, you know, got my strap on. That's you know? it, yeah. <laughs> love having my strap on. Because you've built such a good personal brand that yeah. people like are in, can enjoy to love. But just and teaching I, yeah. that to other people is so... It's, it's so hard because, they, because everyone's so used to looking at a screen, they don't look in the mirror. No. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. So where to next? Like what's next for me? Yeah. So I want to take my concept of SideQuest to around Australia this year. That's what my team and I are hopefully planning. Um, and I think I'll be touring hopefully Europe and the UK this July. Fuck yeah, that's um, sick. That'll be my first ever, yeah. So hey. I've got my first Croatia sale like show booked in, uh, in July, which yeah. is going to be sick. And I think... Um, my agents are looking to get a run of shows for because that's predominantly where my fan base is is in the UK and so I've been dying to get there since I've basically you know blown up the project and I want to be as patient as I can but at the same time if I can make this happen myself without anyone else like I'll go ahead and, and just do it myself you're going to you crush know? it you're going to crush it Hopefully, so, man, it'll be, be sick. So, <laughs> no, you will. There's no contingency plan. So I've, got this, I've got this app called mm -hmm. um, uh, Pod Dex, yep. and there's a few different topics here. But I'm just today, I'm just going to align it with you. I'm yes. going to give uh, give the musical uh, musician yep. interview sort of thing a go. So, um, what kind of music did your parents listen to, and do you think uh, that yep. that had an influence on the type of music? One hundred percent. My dad was the muso and he listened to a lot of blues listened to a lot of jazz listened to a lot of like uh, i was named quincy after quincy jones and uh yeah so my dad and his brothers they all play instruments and they all just do jam together and it's the sweetest thing to see yes. and uh yeah i think i'm the only one out of my kids out of my, my parents kids and my siblings and i that want to pursue in music um, my dad used to also manage my auntie, who's a famous Indonesian singer. Cool. And so he's got like a lot of, I guess, knowledge in, in the Management. music space. Yeah, yeah that will be handy. Yeah. Um, who do you view as an unsung hero of the music industry? Uh, unsung hero of the music industry? Ooh, um, just the gent. I think uh, he's one of my cl close friends as well in the music industry. I mean, he he's he popped off and stuff like years ago, and, and like I've followed him since he was he was like 15 when he blew up, right? And so he's now in his early 20s, and he's he's the best producer that that I know yeah. ever. Like, as in, I just can't. And the nicest guy, best producer, and I think he deserves. Um, like, I think every, he's gonna have another round of 
absolutely blowing up in the, the next couple of years Love for that. sure. Um, how long do you need after eating before you play a show? After eating, um, I'd rather eat while playing a show. What do you eat? Uh, me goreng. I love that. <laughs> do you, you have see? content of you on the decks and me goreng? Oh, I, I, I actually have them of me giving it out because that's one of the <laughs> things that we used to do is throw it to the to the audience. <laughs> noodles. Yeah, noodles because it was like uh, oriental cravings, right? And it was like, um, long story short with that quickly, it's like the, the name oriental, uh, we got backlash from it because it's, it's too politically incorrect, they reckon. So they're like... Oh, Who reckons? Uh, the labels over in the States... And, and and so we had to be yeah, there were a couple of artists that were building with us that they said that we can't put the poster up because those guys are in there and so we tried to we did this campaign we made it like no it's all about food not about or Asian women so we, we put on our rider what's wrong with Asian women right there's nothing wrong but they don't want it to be about it apparently it's like the word oriental it's like saying this is what I love the word oriental is like saying the n-word bro but for Asians I'm like alright what's the n-word say it right now <laughs> I can't then how come you said oriental so one clearly has power over the other right mm. stupid I and love it I love it it reminds me of uh, throwing the noodles out. reminds me of Steve Aoki throwing the cake. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we did that with three noodles. <laughs> um, do you think streaming services like Spotify are good or bad for music? I think they need to pay their artists a little bit more. And I think they need to be a little bit more transparent in, in how people are able to grow. But at the same time, it's kind of good that people can't just buy their way in to streamings and stuff, though. Um, I'm very on the fence with that one, you know what I mean? I think it's hard because technically Spotify is not the only streaming platform. You can do streaming platforms on Apple Music, on Deezer, they pay higher. Uh, why don't you focus a lot more on them instead of Spotify? So it's, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, I think. They do good things because you can get heard pretty easily, but at the same time, it's hard. Dream venue to play on in uh, the world. Printworks in, uh, in the UK. Yeah. Or now they've got a thing called Drum Sheds, which is an old IKEA. Now it's a, a venue. Sick. So they turned the IKEA into a venue. Oh. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> and, it, and it's a 40 meter stage with visuals. 40 meters yeah. that goes. It's crazy. If you can go on tour with two artists, yep. who would they be? Oh, wow. Two artists, as in like dead or alive or just like currently just right now? currently. Oh, um, Definitely one Skrillex, just because like he just does the coolest and, and funniest shit, and he's just a goat. I, I, I love that guy, and probably Fisher because of his personality. <laughs> love it. All right, um, a couple more. When attending a show, yep. Do you stand at the front or the back? Oh, I actually try and stand in most shows that I go to nowadays. I either know who is playing or, you know, I, I pull that card that I like. I'll stand in the backstage or something away from it just because I think I've been doing this and being in the industry for that long, that loud noises, loud music. I like to talk a lot more than I, than I just go in there because I don't do drugs or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, you said you play guitar. Yes. What's one other instrument that you wish you could play? Saxophone. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Because then I could serenade all the ladies yeah. every night. Can't do it with a guitar? Uh, it's t too well and done. You know, you, if you pull the guitar, you're like, oh, here we go. You're the guy that brings the guitar out. But you're the guy that brings a saxophone out. <laughs> or a flute. What, what song? Oh, you know what? John Coltrane, take five. What's the, what's the other one that I'm thinking of? The classic yeah, one? Yeah. Um, What's the song? Uh, Careless Whisper. Good. Yeah. Good. Not a DJ if you don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, right. We've got one more sec segment on the uh, show. The camera's yes. still good? Yeah. So we've got the red phone. Yes. It's ringing. It's for you. Pick it up. Oh. It's Avicii. Back oh, from the dead. Oh, wow. What are you saying to him? Oh, hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen you in a couple of years. Nah, I, oh man, they're putting me on the spot. I guess I'd like to say, Avicii, I'm sorry that you went through all that hardship with your team and that everybody overlooked your mental illness in the industry. But thank you because it's since then, uh, mental illness and all around treatment of artists in the industry have now been looked upon by everyone and 
because of what happened, I guess, to you and a few of the other musicians, everyone is now aware uh, of what artists have gone through. Uh, I guess, thank you for the music and the impact you've had in electronic scene because it wouldn't be where it is today without you. Um, and I wish I could have met you in person and have talked about all these things. Wish you the best in heaven and I'll take it from here, brother. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> all right. Uh, all, the, uh, all the information, everything. That was sick, um, actually. Damn. Yeah, that's a good segment. That was so stupid. Wow. All the uh, information and all the links and all the shit in the mm -hmm. description. Um, thank you so much for having uh, Oh, thank you, being my here, guy. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy from seeing your content. I used to see the, the shit you, you, on, on, on TikTok just like... All, all the time, you know, oh, I'm being that guy again. I'm like, I used to see you <laughs> oh on TikTok. I'm like, being that guy that you're saying. But yeah, dude, I respect everything you do. And uh, it's sick that like there's someone in Perth as well that I could kind of learn from and also have a look and, and also find the drive to do the same thing and what I do because being from Perth, um, you know, it's the most isolated city in the world. There's not a lot of people that you could look to that is killing it and putting the consistent work and i really i like to have those people around me and, and know of those people yeah so bounce off like, each yeah. other collaborate yeah and, so it's and crush it together 100 percent. we're not in a race we're not in a competition against each other oh, except for not, one yeah. specific thing and that is buying our time back yes 100%. once we buy our time back we help in everybody Bro, else correct man literally and like one thing i go by that all the time it's like I have a weird, I'm shit with money because of my relationship with money. Mm. I don't see it as a necessity thing because I'm like, I, uh, you know, uh, I can't get time tool. back. Money's just a tool. And it's a man-made thing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's it. Like have everything should be down with, with this. Conversations, getting to know another person. Um, I think that's the most, most important thing. The reason why I love content is because I can instill hopefully some value or some form of entertainment that someone out there who came from a third world country like myself can look and be like, hey, this guy can do cool shit. And like, I want to do exactly that. You know, and that's, that's where I guess like I have my drive from. And, and then like I want on my gravestone to be like, hey, this is Quinn, the guy who gave more than he took. That's literally it. Can't ask for anything better than that as the <laughs> outro. All right, guys, yeah. I'll see you soon.